right y'all so we're just getting straight into it um as you can see i'm just putting the colors on a paper plate um i'm kind of using a brush to coerce the color out of the bottle you know just to get as much as i need on the plate um you want to lay all of your shades out on the plate so you can mix them and make them you know whatever color you need them to be for the orange that i'm trying to make i just added a little bit of red to that yellow and i'm going to add white to all of the colors just to kind of give it a more pastel look as you can see these how they turned out Once I have all my tips laid out, I'm just going to prep the nail bed by using my um, e-file. Now with this, you don't want to have it on a high set and I always turn mine to the lowest. And I kind of just gently go across my nail just to make it, you know, gritty and rough so that the nail tips will actually stick. Um, after that, I'm going to wipe my nails with some alcohol just to make sure, you know, there's no little flakes left over. And I'm just going to start applying the nail tips. So now I am just trimming my nails to whatever length I want them to be. I'm kind of going for like medium long. So as you can see, I'm probably trimming maybe like a third of an inch off, maybe a fourth. Um, I kind of eyeball every nail, y'all. So if you're new to this, then I would suggest like measuring, um, you know, trying to measure each nail sort of. But yeah, I kind of just eyeball it. So the next step is to foul your tips, y'all. And when I foul mine, I shape them because once you put the um, poly gel on them, it's going to get like, you'll see like your nail shape will look a little bit different than how your tip shape was. So I always kind of do like a coffee tip shape, but I always kind of end up with square nails, if that makes sense. So kind of just always account for like how much poly gel you're going to put on your nails when you're um, shaping your tips. So now we're going to um, prep the nail tip. And with this, you do the same process that you did for your nail bed. Um, I just take my drill and I go across the bottom, y'all. And I'm not fouling my actual nail. I'm just fouling the end of the tip down kind of to blend more in with my nail. Because that'll make it a lot easier when you're applying your poly gel. Because what you don't want is your tip to be sticking out through the gel. That's not cute. So I always make sure you have like kind of a complete fat surface. Like you almost want the tip to look like your natural nail, sort of. So since we're going to be doing um, a gel polish underneath the poly gel, you're gonna put a base coat over the whole nail, like meaning your nail as well as the tip. Cause usually I just put the base coat on my natural nail. But for this um, specific style, we're gonna put the base coat over the whole nail and you just want to make sure you're covering everything and you might have to apply more than one coat of base coat because you kind of want the tip like where you putting a polish to be as smooth as possible just so the polish isn't uh, bumpy so now we're going to add the gel polish um i'm just using one of these brushes i got from Shein, y'all Shein is such a good place to get a lot of your nail stuff because it's cheap and they give you a lot so they gave me this, it was probably like a 12 pack of brushes for a dollar. Um, I didn't kind of run out of them. So you're going to see me uh, kind of washing this brush just in some alcohol. Or you can also use slip solution that I also get the polish out. But as you can see, I'm just adding polish to half of the nail, y'all. Because again, I'm going for an ombre look. So I'm just adding it to half. Um, something that I will recommend that I did not do is instead of making it like a blunt half line, I should have kind of brushed the color down a little bit just to make it a little bit easier for when I did do the ombre with the poly gel, but at the end it still all came together, so that's kind of just up to you. So now we're going to add our poly gel. Um, I'm using this cotton candy type of color. It's basically just a light pink that you can kind of use as a nude, so that's what I'm going to do. But beforehand, we are going to put a base coat on top of the color, and this is just to keep the color on the nail because it doesn't have a top coat on it at all so this will help with when i brush the poly gel and you know try to blend it it'll keep the color from transferring onto the brush so now we're gonna add a bead of poly gel onto each nail and y'all this is kind of the same as acrylic you know how you put your bead 
right by the cuticle and then you kind of brush it upwards that's the same thing you do here um first i always fill in my cuticles because i hate um when i got too much poly gel or there's too less it just don't look good so i always make sure my cuticles are straight first and then you want to kind of bring the poly gel right to that half mark of that polish and once you get to the line where the polish ends you want to kind of like just smash that poly gel down over that line and, it, and it'll kind of like because you want it to stay thick um at your uh nail bed but you want it to kind of smooth out as it goes over the nail polish line and um you can add more than one coat of poly gel if you want to but i'm really trying to avoid that so yeah i'm kind of just trying to stack it on thick at the nail bed and brush it thin as i move upwards so now we're going to use some clear poly gel to go on the top part of the gel polish and this just um kind of levels everything out and make sure everything is uniform and not too bulky in certain areas now i did go with like a cloudy kind of clear because you want the clear to kind of blur out the color so that way that the abstract lines that you're going to paint on top pops so please be keep that in mind when you're choosing like what type of clear to use because i do have different clears and some of them are like crystal clear but you know you have some that are a little bit more cloudy or a little bit more milky so i did choose a cloudy one to kind of make the look come out better all right y'all so now we are finally ready to shape um of course i'm going back in with my drill and i always change or i try to change my um the little sanding band on the drill just to make sure you know i'm starting off with a fresh start um again y'all i'm focusing mostly on my cuticles because i cannot stand when those are flooding y'all it's so not cute to me so i always do that first and i kind of go around the sides and then my next step is to go over the top. Now, going over the top, you kind of want to be careful because you're kind of just trying to make sure everything is uniform. Like, you don't want nothing to be lumpy. So, that's kind of what I do with that. Now, for the actual, like, shaping of the nail, like, if I need to make it a little bit more sharp, I'm going to use a regular file. All right, so this is how they came out. These are how they look shaped. Um, before we get started with the abstract lines, we're gonna do just a base coat on top of what's already been fouled. And this is just, again, just to make the surface smooth. And plus, when you add a base coat and you're trying to like make a design, it makes it a lot easier to wipe stuff off when you mess up. Because if you don't add that base coat, it's gonna be stuff all in little crevices that you can't get out and you're gonna get so frustrated, so please. I always add a base coat. It makes fixing stuff so much more simple. All right, y'all. So now we're about to add our designs. Um, I'm taking a little skinny brush again, y'all. Another purchase from Shein. It came with like four different sizes. Again, this is like one or two dollars, y'all. I'm telling y'all, you gotta check them out. But anyways, um, I'm just adding some little squiggly lines. Um, again, there is no right or wrong to these. I kind of just freestyle each nail no nail is the same at the end you'll see but yeah i kind of just make little squiggly lines and then once i get one line then i'll kind of do a second line that's kind of like in that same direction to kind of make it flow together So this is how they're looking so far. Um, it just has one coat of the design. Now I'm gonna go in and add a second coat. And y'all, this is just gonna top everything off and give it more of a 3D look. I know it's kind of hard to see because the colors are kind of light and there's a glare, but I promise this gives it such a different look than this if I lift it like this.
So the next step after this is just to add a top coat and this is the finished product y'all i hope y'all enjoyed um everything will be in the description as always i've been getting compliments ever since i did these y'all just love how they came out but i'm gonna see y'all in the next one <laughs>